Welcome back. This is day three of your nervous system. Today's aim is how do parts of our bodies communicate? But before we get to that, you guys have got three do not questions. So go ahead and pause this video, answer those questions on your own and press play when you are ready to review them. So question number one, what is area one in this diagram called? Well, if we look at this diagram, we see that area one is actually on the edge of a dendrite, right? The dendrites of the neurons. Okay, and what do those dendrites do? Well, they're going to receive the chemical signals being passed from one neuron to the next. And if something is receiving a signal, we're going to call that a receptor. So this is a receptor of a dendrite. Okay, number two, what is the molecule that binds to area one called? So think back to Thursday's video and we saw that in, within the synapse, which is that gap in between the neurons, these tiny little chemical signals are going to be secreted and they jump across one neuron to the next. So what are those molecules called? Well, we call them neurotransmitters. So they're secreted by one neuron and then they're received by the next. So they jump across that gap. All right, now question three was not on your paper, but Question four is, and that is using the word bank below, list the steps of the reflex arc in order. So we're provided with the words effector, interneuron, receptor, motor neuron, and sensory neuron. And we have to put those in order. The very first step of the reflex arc is the receptor. Okay, the receptor is triggered. Something in the environment is going to stimulate it. So the receptor picks up on a stimulus in the environment. Last week we talked about one example was if you're driving down the street and a kid runs in front of your car, you're gonna notice that, okay? And that kid running in front of your car is the stimulus. So your receptor, something like your eyes, is going to notice that stimulus and is going to send a chemical signal or an electrochemical message to first your sensory neurons. Your sensory neurons then continue to send that message to what we call your interneurons, which we find in your brain and spinal cord. And remember the interneurons are kind of like the interpreters. They take the messages sent from the sensory neurons and then they send them off to the motor neurons. And they kind of have to send it in a different language because sensory and motor neurons don't speak the same language. So the interneurons have to interpret that sensory message and then send it over to the motor neurons which function in movement. And so finally, the last step of this reflex arc is going to be the effector. So you're going to slam on the brakes using something like your muscles um, to cause that action. Okay, so when we talk about effectors, we're talking about muscles. When we talk about receptors, we're talking about sensory organs. All right. Now, today's lesson, we're covering a lot of ground, guys. We're covering the different, the breakdowns or the divisions of the nervous system. We're talking about parts of the brain and we're talking about malfunctions of the nervous system. So everyone buckle up. I'm gonna make this as quick as possible, but we are going to cover a lot of material, but it's exciting. So here we go. The first thing we're gonna to do today is talk about the divisions of the nervous system. So we've talked about the nervous system. We've talked about that it contains the brain, the spinal cord and the, the neurons, but we can actually divide the nervous system into two separate parts. And that is the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So when you think of this word central, you probably thinking, think of something in the middle or the center. So in your body, which parts of the nervous system are in the middle or the center of your body? Think about it. I hope it's making sense. The central nervous system is going to just be your brain and your spinal cord. So those are the parts of the nervous system that are in the middle of your body, right? The brain and the spinal cord are in the, per or I'm sorry, are in the center of your body. Okay, but that means the peripheral nervous system, well, when you hear something on the periphery, it means on the outsides or on the outskirts. So the peripheral nervous system is going to be the sensory and motor neurons that are on the outside edges of your body. Okay, so I provided this diagram, it's on your paper as well. We can see that the things written in purple represent the central nervous system, the brain and the spinal cord are in the middle. But then everything that's in yellow is going to be your peripheral nervous system. 
it's on the outside of your body or it's on the inside, but it's on the outer edges, I should say. All right, outer edges of body. Okay, but here's where it gets a little bit complicated. Okay, so when we're talking about the central nervous system, we're just talking about the brain and spinal cord. When we're talking about the peripheral nervous system, we're talking about your neurons, your sensory and motor neurons. But we can actually divide that peripheral nervous system again. Now, before I lose you, just, just hang in there with me, okay? I promise it's not quite as complicated as it seems. But we're going to break down that peripheral nervous system into two more categories. We're going to break it down into our autonomic and our somatic nervous system. So when you see this word autonomic, it kind of looks like the word automatic. And we've talked about this before. When we see the word automatic, it means it happens on its own. You don't have to think about it. Okay, so when we're talking about the autonomic nervous system, we're talking about controlling internal activities of glands and organs and most importantly, unconscious regulation. So these things happen without you thinking about it. Now with this, we're talking about controlling things like heartbeat and digestion and let's see what else, blood pressure, all of those regulations that occur without you thinking about it. You don't really have to think about making your food digest. It just happens on its own. So that is the result of your autonomic nervous system. This controls things that happen automatically. Then we also have something called the somatic nervous system. And this is going to be controlling external actions of skin and muscles most importantly, conscious movement. So these are things that you think about. Somatic is something that you think about it. Okay, so your somatic, we're talking about really feeling or any other body function. Okay, bodily functions you think about. Right. Now, this diagram is not on your paper, but if you want to screenshot it and include it, you are more than welcome to. Okay, when we break down the nervous system, we break it down into the central and the peripheral nervous system. But then again, we can break down that central nervous system into the parts that are in the middle of your body. So that's going to be your brain and your spinal cord. Now your peripheral nervous system is everything that's on the outskirts. So all of your sensory and your motor nerves or neurons, okay? But we're going to break that down even further into your somatic nervous system, which is conscious thoughts or conscious things, and your autonomic nervous system, which is unconscious. Okay, so your somatic nervous system controls things you think about. Autonomic nervous system controls anything you don't think about, like your heart rate or your breathing, anything that you don't have to think about, but still happens on its own. All right. I told you guys I was gonna move us quickly. I hope I'm not going too quick. Um, but the next part we're gonna talk about today is the brain. Now the brain is a super, super fascinating, but also super complicated organ. There are a bunch of different parts in the brain, um, but I'm only going to require you to know three. Okay, so I think we can do it. There are three parts of the brain you need to know for my class. The first one being the cerebrum. So if you look at the picture on your paper, all of this right here is your cerebrum. So it's all of this part of your brain. And that cerebrum controls thinking, moving, and sensing. Okay, so everything that has to do with thinking, movement, and sensing is controlled by your cerebrum, which is this big part of your brain right here. Um, but we can just describe it as like the top of our head, okay? The next part of the brain we need to know is your cerebellum. Now your cerebellum is at the back of your head. So if you turn your head, it's right here at the back. Okay, so whenever you feel, if you feel on your skull, you might feel it kind of turn in at one point right here. That is your cerebellum right here. And your cerebellum controls balance and coordinating all of the muscles. So you might say that I have a really bad cerebellum because I am not balanced. I have horrible coordination. So I have my cerebellum to blame for that. And the last part of your brain that you need to know is called your medulla or your medulla. Okay, and that is another word for your brainstem. 
So that's located at the very base of your neck, okay, um, right here. And that medulla or brainstem controls all of the autonomic functions in your body. So remember we said autonomic means automatic. So these are going to be things like heartbeat and breathing, things that you don't have to think about. They just happen on their own. That is controlled by your brainstem. Okay, and that leads, that brainstem leads directly into your spinal cord. So those two things are connected. All right, and that's it. Those are the three parts of the brain you need to know. So make sure you know those three parts as well as their functions. Got it. Now, the last thing we're gonna cover today is our three different malfunctions of the nervous system. So how do things go wrong and how does that impact us? The very first malfunction we need to know is something called cerebral palsy. So cerebral palsy is caused by damage to the motor centers of the brain. So remember when we see this word motor, we're talking about movement, okay? And this happens before or during birth. Now, because the motor centers of the brain are damaged, this is going to cause poor muscle coordination and speech difficulties. Anything that requires movement um, is going to be impaired. So someone with cerebral palsy is going to have difficulty walking um, or speaking. Anything that involves movement is going to be pretty difficult for them. Okay, the next malfunction we need to know is something called meningitis. Now, I think I mentioned this earlier in the unit or earlier in the year, I guess, because someone asked about this word itis, right? And whenever we see this word itis, we're talking about swelling. So with meningitis, what's swelling are something called the meninges. Now, I just completely lost my trail of thought. Like I just <laughs> completely zoned out. What we need to know about meningitis is that it's inflammation or swelling of the membranes surrounding the brain and spinal cord. And those membranes are what we call the meninges. Okay, so swelling of the membranes or the meninges surrounding the brain and spinal cord. Now this is caused by an infection um, and it can be either viral or bacterial, which means it can be, it's a, an infection caused either by a virus or a bacteria. And so what are some pos possible consequences of this? Well, your brain is swelling. The, the meninges around your brain are swelling. This is going to cause things like headaches or fevers, um, really specifically headaches. <laughs> your brain is swelling, it's gonna hurt, okay? Um, so not good. Now. If you are queasy, please close your eyes for the next two seconds. I've got an actual picture of a brain that I'm gonna show you, but here's your warning. All right, this is what meningitis or specifically the meninges look like. So in this picture, you can see that these um, tweezers are being used or forceps are being used to pull back that layer or that membrane surrounding your brain. That is your meninges. So when a person has meningitis, those membranes are gonna swell and make your brain swell into the skull. Okay, now if you're queasy, you can open your eyes again, it's gone. <laughs> the third um, disorder we need to know is something called polio. So this is caused by a virus. It is a viral disease of the nervous system caused spe specifically by um, something called polio virus. Okay, and this may cause paralysis, but it can be prevented by an immunization or a vaccine. So all of you, theoretically and hopefully have had the vaccine for polio, which means you can't get polio. You're good. You're not going to become paralyzed due to this virus. So then I've got a question for you. Why is it important that we receive our polio vaccine? Or let's even apply this. Why is it important that we receive our COVID vaccine when that comes out? I'm not going to tell you. I want you to tell me. Tell me on your paper. Why is it important that we receive our vaccines? All right. And that is all I've got for you, for you guys today. I know this was super, super quick, but I didn't wanna make this video too long. Um, if you have any questions about what we went over today, please send me a message on Remind. But other than that, have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you guys tomorrow.